Hey, hey, everybody. We are gonna look at the difference between a phrase and a clause today. I know you're super pumped about it. It is really good stuff for you to know and it will make you a lot better at constructing sentences. So the first thing to know is what a phrase is. A phrase is a group of words working together that do not include both a noun and a verb. They can have one or the other, but they can't have both. Some examples would be the fabulous teacher or with the purple pony, right? So if I had a sentence, Miss Naylor, comma, the fabulous teacher, comma, made sure to get to school early to finish your video, period, then I would have what we call an, a positive phrase, right? A noun, teacher, naming another noun, Miss Naylor. Similarly, if I have with the purple pony, with is a preposition, right? So this is a prepositional phrase. It just gives us some more details. Let's look at some examples kind of in context. So here is a sentence, the mouse stole the cheese. Well, you know, if I think the mouse stole the cheese, this is not the picture I think of. So if I add some phrases to my sentence, I'm gonna have a much clearer picture of what's happening for my, for my audience, right? So instead of saying the mouse stole the cheese, which just makes me think of like, you know, a mouse running up and eating some cheese, I might say the mouse, the sneaky rodent clothed in spandex, stole the cheese. So now I have some details that describe the mouse. Which mouse was it? Well, it was the sneaky rodent clothed in spandex. Now, this cannot stand alone. The sneaky rodent clothed in spandex doesn't get, have a verb in it, right? It just has a noun. So it's a phrase, not a clause. And I can keep building out like this. You can keep adding phrases. So now, the mouse, the sneaky rodent clothed in spandex, there's my positive phrase, stole the cheese from the dangerous mouse trap. Well, now I have a prepositional phrase too, right? Where did he steal it from? He stole it from the dangerous mouse trap. And I can keep on building. Before his favorite TV show, the mouse, the sneaky rodent clothed in spandex, stole the cheese from the dangerous mouse trap. I'm assuming that any mouse that has this much gear probably has a TV too. So, you know. And if you look here, we've got another prepositional phrase, right? When, before his favorite TV show. Again, no verb, can't be a, cl a clause, it's gotta be a phrase. So a clause is a group of words working together that do include a subject or, and a verb, or a noun and a verb, right? And they can be independent or dependent. We're gonna start with the independent clauses, and Mrs. Montgomery has very, very kindly volunteered herself as tribute for this, so. An independent clause must have a noun and a verb. We usually think of like a subject and a predicate, right? So if it's the independent clause, it has the subject and the predicate. And it can stand alone. It can be independent, right? Like Mrs. Montgomery, she's an adult. She's independent. She can take herself out to lunch. She drives her car, right? She is independent. Um, and so here we have our independent clause about Mrs. Montgomery. Mrs. Montgomery enjoys eating lunch outside. So. Here's my subject, Mrs. Montgomery, and here's my verb, enjoys. So I have a whole predicate here. What does she enjoy? Eating lunch outside. All of this works together, right? So an independent clause can stand alone and it has both a noun and a verb, which we call the subject and the predicate because it's independent. The dependent clause is like the little kid, like sweet little Eliana, right? So a dependent clause contains a noun and a verb still. That's what makes them kind of confusing. But it can't stand alone. It has to depend on an independent clause. So for instance, dependent clauses would be things like, when Eliana smiles. Well, I have a subject, Eliana, and I have a verb, smiles, but it, my thought's not complete, right? It needs, when Eliana smiles, Mrs. Montgomery smiles too. And that would make it a complete thought, and it would give it an independent clause to lean on, right? Or something like, that she wore her blue tutu. Well look, she wore, noun, verb. And yet, not a complete thought, right? It can't stand alone. It needs an independent clause to hold it up. Whatever way she could get around. Well again, she could, subject verb, but, or excuse me, noun verb, but no complete thought. It has to have another clause, an independent clause to lean on. So this is what it looks like when they work together, right? You've got Mrs. Montgomery and sweet Eliana here. 
When Eliana went to the pumpkin patch, she was in a picture with her mom, Mrs. Montgomery. So I actually have three things here, right? When Eliana went to the pumpkin patch, subject, or excuse me, noun and verb, Eliana went. But I have when at the beginning, so that makes it dependent. If I had a period here, my sentence would be wrong. When Eliana went to the pumpkin patch, what happened? Well, she was in a picture with her mom. She is my subject and was, right, so is my verb. So we have she, as my subject, was in a picture with her mom predicate. And then we even added a little, uh, a, a positive here, right? A noun, renaming another noun. Look how cool we are. Pretty cool. So that's what independent and dependent clauses look like together. Here's the hard part. You have to be kind of careful. Sometimes phrases look like clauses. And Mrs. Raines is going to get into the nitty gritty details of this in a little bit. But let's take a look. Before taking the picture, Mrs. Montgomery got Eliana to smile. So here's my independent clause. Mrs. Montgomery got Eliana to smile. Subject, predicate. Before taking the picture, that is a phrase right? It starts with a preposition, and it doesn't have a complete thought, it doesn't have a subject and a verb, right? Or excuse me, a noun and a verb. So that's really important. Without a noun and a verb, before is acting as a preposition. So we are starting our sentence with a prepositional phrase. Now look down here. I start with before again, but my sentence is very different. Before they took a picture, Mrs. Montgomery got Eliana to smile. My independent clause hasn't changed, right? Mrs. Montgomery is my subject, got Eliana to smile as my predicate. Up here, I start with before. Here, it's acting as what we'll call a subordinating conjunction, right? It's the part that makes this dependent. Because if you look, they took a picture. I have a noun, they, and a verb, took. So this is a clause. The before makes it a dependent clause but it's still a clause because it has both a noun and a verb. So in review, a phrase can have either a noun or a verb, but not both, and it doesn't ever express a complete thought. A clause ha must have both a noun and a verb, and it can be independent, standalone, express a complete thought, or dependent, needing an independent clause to lean on. This should help you as you get ready for your next lesson. And keep in mind, you can always come back and look at this again if you forget, okay?